All right, welcome back, flooring retailers, to another webinar Wednesday. I am Taylor Rash, joined here by Courtney Morrison. Courtney, tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah, of course. Um, so my name is Courtney Morrison, like Taylor said. I am the online reputation strategist here at Broadloom. Um, originally born in New York, but Florida grown. Um, so not sure if I can claim the New York part, but I do. Um, managed online reputation for four years now. Um, with living in Florida, I've become an avid shark tooth collector um, and definitely a huge Jaguars fan. That's awesome. Duval, I think is what they say down there. Um, very cool. So obviously with the subject matter expertise that you have today, or we are going to be talking about uh, how to turn reviews into revenue uh, and how you can grow your business with customer feedback. Um, as you know, I'm Taylor. If you were on our webinar a couple of weeks ago, nothing's changed. So my information is still the same. Uh, really happy with the Gators performance so far this, this year. Um, so looking forward to the rest of it. Uh, on the agenda today, we're going to talk about a few things. We're going to talk about the benefits of online reviews. Why do you need to get them? Uh, Courtney's going to cover six simple review generation strategies, really good tips for you. And then we'll go over some success stories. And then like always with our webinars, uh, we're going to have a live Q&A right after. So submit your questions now through the chat. Uh, we've already gotten some through email uh, after we sent out the announcement for this. So we'll be uh, making sure we get to those. Uh, so keep your questions handy, get them ready, submit them now, whatever you want to do. Um, so let's hop right into it. Uh, Courtney, what is a review? Yeah, so jumping right in, um, an online review is essentially your customer's opinion of your business. So their personal view on the quality of your products and or service. Um, and really the aim here, the goal of online reviews is to build trust um, in order to increase your sales. Yeah, thank you for that. And I think there's a lot of uh, questions sometimes or confusion um, that you have to have a, a five star rating or you have to have this. You got to have a million reviews. And while there is some truth to that, um, at the foundation of it, you just need to have reviews. And we'll talk about some of those strategies. Uh, but Courtney, let me ask you, uh, do you ever buy anything online or even uh, walking into a store without looking at the reviews first? I always do, even if it's a small purchase, um, you know, understanding, you know, what a business does right and wrong, you can really tell through their reviews. Um, so it really gives you an insight, a deep dive into their business. Absolutely. I mean, you think even on Amazon, right? Like uh, when I go, I recently, I just bought some stand up paddle boards because I wanted to get into it and try it. And there's a million paddle boards out there and I'm just starting. So I wanted an entry level uh, and you look and I mean, for 200 bucks, you can get a pretty decent paddle board, but they're pretty much all the same. So then you look at the reviews and while they look identical when you're looking at the listings, you know, one might have a thousand reviews and one might have 200. Well, I'm immediately going to favor the one that has the more reviews because it just means more people have tried out that product or in our case as retailers service. Um, so it's uh, definitely important to get those reviews. And we'll talk a little bit more in depth about that here in a few minutes. Um, so we just talked about a couple of the benefits, but what would you say are the broader benefits of online reviews? Yeah, um, so we did kind of touch on this, but, you know, building a trustworthy brand, um, you know, also increasing your online visibility um, and being able to convert more customers. Yeah, I think the online visibility part is something that a lot of companies and specifically foreign retailers miss. Like we always want that edge. We always want to show up first in the rankings when people are looking for us. Right. Uh, and SEO uh, is one of those ways to do it. So with your online reviews, good or bad, because Google actually looks at the responses of them as well, uh, that can actually boost your SEO. So super cool benefits of just getting reviews. Um we really want to provide a lot of value for our retailers, for anybody taking time out of their day to join us. So we're going to provide some generation strategies of reviews. Uh, we'll go through six, add a little commentary to each, uh, and then go from there. So Courtney, uh, what are kind of the review strategies that we're going to cover today? Yeah, so um, tip number one we're going to cover is, you know, asking for Google reviews. Tip number two, make the process as easy as possible. Tip number three, respond to new reviews. Tip number four is to share those five-star reviews. 
Um, tip number five, uh, frequently update your Google business profile. And tip number six is to provide exceptional customer service. I love those. And I think the the context that we'll be able to add to each of these are really going to be valuable to our retailers. So stick through. Um, I think one of the top things, uh, really the easiest thing to do is tip number one, which is ask. So Courtney, what are some of the best ways to ask for a new review? Yeah, um, so some of the best ways to ask um, or really just some best practices to go by are really nailing the timing of your request. Yeah, I think, you know, when I was a retailer, we always had a struggle of when to ask because we had multiple touch points um, as we went through the sales cycle. So it was either, you know, the person scheduling the appointment, uh, the salesperson doing the measuring, actually uh, getting the sale. Uh, the installation coordinator, the installer. So there's all these different times. So we struggled with the best timing to ask for those reviews. Uh, and each business is going to be different, but we found the right time uh, for us was right about two weeks after the install was complete, uh, because then they actually have time to enjoy the, the floors, things like that. Um, so yeah, timing super important. Um, what about what the message is read like? Like how do you present the message? Yeah, you definitely want to personalize your message as much as possible. Um, so definitely creating your own and adding your own little spin to it. Um, we have one of our dealers who is currently using a Bitmoji, which is essentially just a cartoon avatar of themselves and their dog. You know, when it really catches your eye, you're like, okay, this is not just any other review request I'm going to get through my email. Um, so something that might jump out at someone or some unique verbiage that you could include would be great. Awesome. That's great advice. I think part of it too, on the, and just to do personalized and timing, you know, when you think about the interactions you have with the customer, and if you exceed their expectations at any time through the process, or if they say, Hey, thank you so much. That really helped. You could be on a phone call with them and maybe something was backward. A lot of us are dealing with that nowadays. Um, but we are able to figure out a way or change their mind to a different product that was in stock possibly. Uh, ask for that review. There's no, there's nothing that says you can't just ask for it on the phone. Hey, so glad we were able to help you out. Do you mind if I send you a link right now for a review? Um, most of the time they're going to be receptive to it. And if not, they still have the link and they can do it. Um, when it comes to these review requests, Courtney, does it need to be this long drawn out? Um, hey, as a business, we thrive on reviews and this, that, and the other. Like, what's the best way when we think about sending that message uh, for uh, basically the copy of what that request is going to include? Sure. Yeah, we're going to want to keep it short and sweet. You don't want to send, you know, a paragraph or two to someone. They're, odds are they're not going to want to read it. You're going to want to keep your message, you know, straight to the point um, and just really friendly and welcoming. Awesome. Um, now, when we... we we're kind of focusing on Google reviews, but are there other platforms, things like that, that you can ask for reviews on? Yeah, of course. Um, I would definitely recommend Facebook um, or Angie, formerly Angie's List, um, as some alternative options. Very cool. All right, so tip number two, we touched on it a little bit on the previous slide, but we always wanna make the process as easy as possible. We don't wanna make them jump through hoops. Um, so how can we do that? Yeah, so this can be done by sharing a direct review link with your customers. Um, you know, it might seem really simple just to ask someone to log into a review site and to search for your business, then leave a review. Um, that can seem really daunting. So just eliminating any extra steps for your customers um, is really going to increase the likelihood of actually getting a review. Yeah, and I think, too, it keeps your business front of mind if you just send them a link, because if you just say, hey, go to Google, search for us, leave a review, well, there's a chance they're going to see some competitors uh, and some other businesses when they're Googling you, uh, and you don't want to make them go clicking around the internet just trying to find you to leave a review. Again, make it easy as possible, send that link, they click on it, leave the review right there, super easy. All right, moving on, tip number three. Super important, respond to new reviews. So why is this important for you? Yeah, number one, which is a big one, um, it can help your local SC or local search rankings, excuse me, um, on Google. And it can also show your customers that you value their feedback. 
Yeah, and I think a lot of times, you know, I've left reviews and I don't get a response. I'm like, oh, they just don't care. Or um, maybe the notifications weren't set up correctly or whatever that may be. I want to know that my feedback, whether positive or negative, is valued and addressed. Um, because if I have a good experience, maybe with a certain employee, I want the business managers to recognize that employee. And if I had a bad experience, I just want to know that, hey, maybe I'm not going to go through this experience again, but somebody else, it's going to be fixed by the time it gets to them. Uh, so definitely super important. So what are some do's and don'ts when you're responding to reviews? Yeah, I know you just kind of touched on it, but um, you know, do respond in a timely manner. You don't want to let those um, reviews you do get sit for you know a month, even weeks. Um, like Taylor said, it could really just show that that customer doesn't feel appreciated at that time. So definitely want to respond in a timely manner. Um, and also thanking your reviewer for their feedback. You know, all feedback is great. Um, so you definitely want to be thanking them for that. Um, you definitely don't want to be defensive in your responses either. Um, and don't want to respond only to those negative reviews. Yeah, I think sometimes as retailers, you know, a lot of us are small business owners. Uh, so when someone quote unquote attacks our business, they're attacking us. Uh, we have to remember not to get defensive there, specifically negative reviews. And I know Courtney, I don't know about you, but a lot of times for me, when I'm looking at reviews of a company, I'll search by the worst ones first. Mm -hmm. uh, and not, I don't really want to know what the review was. Like maybe it's something we all know if you sell a hundred products, one of them might have an issue, but I want to know how the business handled that. Um, a lot of times it's not the fact that something fails. It's not the fact that something goes, that goes wrong. Uh, it's about how that business addressed that concern and fixed it moving forward for me, a new potential customer. Um, when you're responding to positive reviews, obviously thanking for the feedback as well. Um, are there any tips and tricks or uh, do you personalize those reviews? Should it just be like a copy and paste? How should we be interacting with those responses? Yes, so with review replies, you definitely wanna be personalizing your message. Um, you know, maybe you don't have time to write a custom reply to every review, that's totally fine. You can have maybe 10 templates you have saved um, that you can rotate through, but um, definitely change it up a bit. Don't reply with the same, you know, text each time. Yeah, it'd probably get pretty easy to catch on to as a consumer if right. every single, hey, Courtney, thanks for your business. Glad you had a great experience. Hey, David, thank you for your business. Glad you had a great experience. I mean, it just shows, um, you know, the, it's not really cared about, right? Like it's just a canned response. You don't actually care. You're just responding to respond. Uh, yeah, great input, great tips. All right, number four. So we've gotten a review. Uh, it's been a great review. We had fun. We responded. It's done. It's on our Google business profile. What do we do with it from there? Yeah, so you definitely want to be highlighting those five-star really great reviews you do get because um, this can help attract new customers and uh, build trust with existing ones. Um, so some examples of where you are going to want to be sharing those great reviews are, number one, your website. Um, so with every Broadly website, we do build out a reviews page on the websites. So, you know, this step is kind of already taken care of for you um, if you are a Broadly customer. Um, additionally, we would recommend, you know, social media as a secondary option. Yeah, and I think whether you use a Broadloom website or not, most website providers out there will have some sort of plugin or something you can use to have your reviews on your website. Highly recommend it. Um, if not, we'd be happy to chat with you, but that's not what this is about. Um, I think, too, uh, you see it out there, right? Like there was a, a company here recently. I don't even remember what I was looking for, um, but it came out with a personalized Facebook ad and it said, so-and-so from Gilbert, Arizona, just left this review. And it was just a screenshot of the Google review, but they were using it on Google. Super informative, loved the ad, uh, loved the review. And it spoke to me, it was personalized just because it was where I live. Uh, so really, really important to share those five-star reviews. Uh, great tip. All right. This one, nobody wants to do, but it's so funny because it's one of those just kind of free things that you can do. Um, so let's talk about tip, tip number five, which is updating your Google business profile. 
Yeah, so regularly updating your um, Google listing is going to ensure Google shares like the most in accurate information. Um, so some things to keep in mind, you know, your business name, address, phone number, um, business hours are a big one too. So, you know, this being your normal operating hours, you know, and your special holiday hours. So, you know, say you were closed this past Labor Day, you definitely want to be letting Google know that, hey, I'm going to be closed on Labor Day. Um, so your customers are, you know, the most informed. Yeah, and I think too, it's a great opportunity to share before and after photos. You can share um, kind of fun facts. If you're going to run a promotion or a sale, you can put those in uh, your Google business profile. So there's a lot of opportunity uh, and just kind of a snippet on that. If you ever type in a search for flooring retailer near me, a lot of times that business profile is what's going to trigger that response and put you up there. So it's one of the most viewed parts of Google uh, that you have based on your business. Keep it updated, keep it accurate, update the holiday hours, things like that. Lots and lots of photos before and after your storefront, inside your showroom, things like that. So always make sure that's updated. Um, super, super helpful. All right, number six. And this is kind of the all encompassing because everything else we've talked about relies on this. So let's talk about exceptional customer service. Yeah, so um, your business reviews have the power to influence future customer buying decisions. Um, so when you have a customer who's considering making a purchase, you know, they're most likely going to turn to the opinions and experiences of others, um, which I'm sure we can all relate to. Um, so your business reviews really do have the power to speak to your future customers. Yeah, and the whole point of this webinar is to share with how we can uh, turn reviews into revenue. And this is really it. You know, when you provide exceptional customer service on every single level, um, it shows and it shines. So again, you know, we would actually, uh, every every team member in our company, if you were ever talking to a customer, you had the expectation of going above and beyond, exceeding their expectations, asking for that review. And one way we did it to increase our reviews is we would actually incentivize the entire company. So if you were on the phone with somebody, if you were on site with somebody, uh, you had a great experience, asked for the review. If they mentioned your name in that review, you would get a gift card. We would do monthly and quarterly goals for reviews because it really is that important. Um, providing that exceptional customer service from the first time you interact with them, whether it be a CRM or a phone call or a form, your website, whatever that may be, all the way through the install process um, means something and it matters. And there's different levels that you can provide. So making sure you always provide exceptional customer service should be number one, because if you don't, the reviews you get uh, won't be the best. And then it just kind of goes out the window. So um Awesome tips. We're going to cover some more in the Q&A uh, on these, but let's talk about some success stories. I know, Courtney, you have a little bit of data on some of our customers uh, that you've worked with. Uh, so let's talk about those a little bit. Yeah. So here we just have um, two of our customers highlighted. So just a before and after snapshot of, you know, when they first launched with Broadloom, you know, how many reviews they had versus present day. Um, so this first customer here, you know, started with 43 reviews, 4.4 overall star rating. Uh, they were able to jump to 699 reviews um, and increase their overall rating to 4.9. Um, same with customer two, started with 80 reviews, jumped to 907, um, and then increased their overall rating to a 4.9. Yeah, I think the numbers like this, those are phenomenal numbers. Great job. Um, but I think numbers like this really add legitimacy to a business, because if I go and I'm spending thousands and thousands of dollars, I want to know that the company that I'm dealing with uh, has provided this service multiple times and they really are the experts. Uh, we always talk about establishing yourself as the local expert in flooring. Well, if you have 43 reviews and you've been in business for 20 years, um, to me, that doesn't really establish that expertise level. But if you have 699 reviews, all right, you're doing some things in the community. You're, you know what you're doing. You provided 4.9 level service to almost 700 people. Yeah, and Google is also going to take these numbers into effect too when determining what you rank on Google search. So when someone searches um, for a business, you're going to be most likely 
on that first page um, as a recommendation by Google. Which is great input. Um, mm -hmm. I have a side question for you, Courtney, because I know my answer and I'll answer it after you. But if a company has only five star reviews, what's your perception on that? Um, I think at that point, I would also look at um, maybe the amount of reviews they have. Um, I would honestly probably just start reading through all of them and seeing, okay, is this real? Is this, are these all legitimate? Um, I definitely think having below a five star shows that you do have real customer feedback, which I think is great. Yeah, that's huge. I think, um, you know, when I was a retailer, we were pretty large and we'd have companies approach us all the time and they would say, we can get you a thousand five star reviews and you have you basically buy these reviews and it's just all these fake accounts um, that would go through and post reviews and it was, it's super unethical and we obviously never did it. But for me, especially if I see a large amount of reviews and if they're all five stars, I got to question that because I know personally, uh, I have friends that you could have blown everything out of the water and they met every expectation and exceeded it and they were so happy, but they just never give five stars. It's like against their moral code. Um, I actually had uh, a boss one time when we were going through our reviews and he would say, um, just so you know, I'm going to, I'm going to judge everything on one to 10. I never give tens. I'm like, well, what if I did 10? He's like, I just don't do it. Um, so I think there's some legitimacy and maybe not having everything be a five. You can definitely have a majority of five, but I want to see how you interacted with some of those imperfect, uh, imperfect, uh, job, uh, experiences. So yeah, good input, good insight. Um, all right. Thank you, Courtney. Uh, you are the expert at Broadloom. If anyone has any questions, make sure you put them in the chat. Uh, we're going to hop into live Q&A. Before we do that, remember, as the Florida Gator, I'm begging you, you got to come to FloorCon on Amelia Island, November 28th through December 1st. It's our biggest and best yet. Obviously, Tim Tebow is officially announced as the keynote. Lots of other surprises and educational opportunities like you wouldn't imagine. Register now. It's going to be a lot of fun. So uh, let's hop into the Q&A. Thank you again, Courtney. Um, and let's get to it. All right. That was so much fun. Thanks, Courtney. It's always great to talk to other uh, team members that may be in a different department just to kind of get some insight. Uh, which is really cool. So thanks for doing that. We have a ton of questions. Let's hop right in. Um, let's see what we have coming up here. Uh, I know we had some, uh, yeah, here you go. Uh, Courtney, why don't you take this one? What are some ways I can personalize my message when requesting a review? Yeah, so personalizing your message is always going to be recommended um, when sending a review request to your customers. Um, so definitely keeping, you know, your business name and logo front and center um, is always recommended, um, as well as keeping the message short and sweet. Um, I know we touched about this on um, during the presentation, but, um, you know, maybe adding custom photos or um, some unique text um, that can help your business stand out in the request um, is always a great idea. Awesome. And I think too, you know, even mentioning the customer's name or uh, the right. product that you installed, for example, like, hey, Courtney, you know, if you're happy with your luxury vinyl installation that we did on this day, you know, we would love a positive review. So that's a, a really easy way just to kind of personalize that. Uh, thank you for that question. Um, next one up, let's see. What is the best time to ask for a review? Um, so as a former retailer, um, and again, this is going to be very unique to your business. It depends on kind of what that cycle looks like. Are you cash and carry only? Um, do you do the full installs, things like that? So really it's going to determine, um, you know, by what your business is like, for example, um, if you do it the day of the install, well, maybe they haven't even been home long enough to enjoy it. Maybe they haven't. Uh, actually fully inspected it, things like that. So you just have to kind of determine what that timeline is. Also, if you ask for it too soon after the install, the customer is going to go through and they're going to blue tape everything. And if there's the smallest imperfection, you know, if, and you ask them for a review before that's been addressed, 
uh, you're going to get maybe a not great review. So um, just give it time. Uh, a, another kind of tip for this too is in your follow-up calls, like after the installation is done, just ask them how everything is. Are you happy? Um, did everything go good? Were you happy with your installers? Did they clean up well? So really get all those questions out of the way at first, and then you can ask for the review. Um, yeah, Rachel, like you said, when the client is happy, that's absolutely great feedback for that. Uh, okay. Um, any, anything else on that, Courtney? Uh, no. Yeah, I think we covered it pretty well. Cool. All right. Up next. Ooh, that's a good one. Um, Courtney, I will let you have that one. What, what do I do if I get a negative review from someone who is not my customer? Yeah. So this does happen time to time. Um, the number one thing is that, no, we don't really have the ability to delete any reviews, um, but there are steps to go about it to, you know, hopefully resolve this. So number one would be to, first of all, reply to that review. Um, just like we mentioned in the presentation, um, every review you're going to want to reply to. Um, secondly, would be go about reporting or flagging this review on the platform that it was left on. Um, and making sure that this review does, you know, violate one of the policies of this platform. So like this person said, negative reviews not left by this customer, that would be considered, you know, impersonation. So you might, you would have more basis of possibly getting it removed. Yeah. And I think too, the response is really key on these because we used mm -hmm. to get this all the time. The, the first letter of our name uh, was very similar to the first letter of another large retailer. And we would get reviews all the time because they would just confuse us and we would simply respond and say hello person whatever your name is um i looked and can't find any record of you in our system it's possible you're confusing us with another company could you email us at this address uh, so we can handle this for you so one um yes maybe it's a negative review but you're showing everybody that's looking at the review hey i don't know who this person is i'm trying to get it figured out for them um, so it just adds kind of that legitimacy to you as well. Um, mm -hmm. So great question. Thank you for that one. What's next? Saw some great comments come in, some cool questions. Uh, ben Henwood, a couple of years ago, had an employee sit down on a Google training. And they said every Google review was worth $400 in free advertising. Uh, ben, great comment. Uh, before I was at the retailer, I was at Google. Uh, I fully support and say, yep, uh, it may even have gone up since then with uh, with how much people are utilizing reviews. Um, yeah, so great context. Thanks for that, Ben. Another one from Ben. He's on fire today. Uh, I have a QR code, a QR on the back of my cards for Google review and also text in the link. Awesome. Uh, again, like Courtney talked about, the easiest way, the easiest path that we can get them to leave us a review is going to be the best one. Um, Courtney, have you seen people kind of utilize this on business cards or any other collateral they may have? Yeah, I've seen people have, you know, the QR codes um, printed out in their storefront um, or even on an iPad in their store ready to go. Um, just having that already pulled up for them. Um, yeah, like you said, just waiting. <laughs> Sorry about that, but just, uh, yeah, making the process as easy as possible and eliminating any extra steps for them. Awesome. Yeah, great work, Ben. Love that. All right, what else? WeCork. WeCork, hey, uh, WeCork, we are going to see you guys at FloorCon, I believe. Uh, thanks for participating. Excited to have you guys there. Um, do we need permission to share reviews? Courtney, I'll let you take that one. Yeah, so um, I think if you're going to be sharing your reviews for any type of um, advertisement or anything like that, I think it's always great to get permission um, from that user. You know, you can even ask it in the reply that you post to them, um, just in case you never know if someone, you know, maybe doesn't want that um, shared out. But yeah, great question. It's always good to get consent for that. Yeah, and I think um, it's, it's kind of like that double-edged thing, right? Like if you are going to use it for advertising, um, there's certain ways to do it. Like one, uh, you can either just blur out the name or the company and say so-and-so from, I mean, Gilbert, uh, Taylor from Gilbert shared this review. Um, so you can just kind of 
blur out the name and just say a customer in Gilbert or whatever that may be. Um, so you can still share them. You don't necessarily need to call out that person. Um, and the other side of that is if they're posting it on a public profile, uh, they're posting it out there and it just kind of depends. So yeah, best practice, um, get their permission, but um, there's ways to get around it. If you don't want to get that permission, just kind of blur out the name, things like that. Great question. How many times is the max number of times asking for review and over what length of period? Um, I'm going to, I'll talk about it from my experience and then Courtney, I'll let you see if there's, if it lines up <laughs> with the actual best practice. Um, so really you don't want to like hammer, um, you know, ask for the review. Sometimes they just get busy and they forget. So we would usually ask two, maybe three times at the max, uh, and over about a week to two week period. So if you're on the phone with them or if Ben, you're handing them a, a business card and you say, Hey, scan the QR code on the back. Um, maybe they just got busy and have and forgotten about it. Um, send them an email or a text in a few days. Be like, Hey, just wanted to remind you, this is where you can leave a positive impact for our business, things like that. And then after the third time, if it gets to the third time, it kind of shows that they just don't really have an interest in leaving that review, maybe for privacy reasons, uh, kind of like WeCorp's question. Uh, there could be a multitude of different reasons. So I would say maybe two times, time it right within a couple of weeks. Uh, Courtney, what are your thoughts on that? No, I'm definitely aligned with um, your recommendation. You definitely don't want to bombard bombard them. Um, and you, I mean, you can definitely send them between intervals. So like you said, a week or two in between, um, just so you're not setting them every single day that might, you know, might get a little annoying. Yeah. If I got review requests every day, which it actually happens, Amazon's mm -hmm. probably the worst for it. Um, I'm more inclined to leave a negative review. Like just leave me alone. Yeah. Stop. Go away. Uh, great question, Ben. All right. What else do we have? Is that it? Any more questions coming in? Let's check the chat real quick. Yeah, I think, oh, here we go. Let's see, I think Ben just submitted another question. Let's see. Uh, when people come in for a cleaner or something similar, I offer to give it to them for free if they leave me a review inside the store. Yeah, I mean, that's a that's a great uh, great tactic. I mean, there's, it's interesting because in certain areas, um, you know, Google doesn't necessarily love incentivizing reviews. Uh, if you're doing it in person in the store, I mean, how are they really gonna know? I don't think that's a, a huge issue. Um, just be careful with it. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think that's a great tactic. Um, you have them right in front of you, why not ask him for it? All right, let's see. I think we have one more. Any tips on getting video testimonials? Yeah, so we actually did this um, for quite a while. Uh, so essentially, it's pretty easy. If you have kind of, again, that follow-up call where you're asking people if they are happy, did everything go right, um, Ask them. Some people will be very welcoming, like, hey, do you mind if we come out and, you know, do a video testimonial, show your floor, things like that. Um, you know, that I think there's probably more of an opportunity to incentivize because you're actually going to their home, you're taking video, and it's not necessarily like you're not paying for a review. Um, it's just a, a, a gift basket or something like that. Um, so that would be uh, one way to do it. But yeah, just ask. I mean, the worst they're going to say is no. Um, you can also use this when you're looking at before and after photos. Um, like, hey, do you mind if we come out and take a couple of pictures before? Once we're done, we'll do it. As you're out there doing the after photos, um, be like, hey, would you mind just doing a quick video testimonial if you're happy? Um, Courtney, any more thoughts on that? Yeah, I think asking um, with any customer that is happy with their experience right then and there is always great. Um, but yeah, I'm totally aligned with what you said. Cool. All right. So I think that is all the questions we have. Um, and really just to bring the, the entire thing home, you know, this is an easy way that helps you generate revenue. Well, how can reviews generate revenue? Well, kind of all the things we've talked about, if people are looking at these reviews,
they see that you're engaging, uh, they see that you have great reviews, and if it's maybe negative, they see how you're addressing them in a professional and proper way, they're gonna be more inclined to pick up that phone and make a phone call, call your business, step into your store, go to your website and fill out that lead form. Um, so reviews are absolutely a great way uh, to become revenue. And like Ben mentioned earlier, uh, according to Google, every review is worth about 400 bucks in advertising. Um, so make sure uh, that you're using this. And if you want to learn more, if excuse me, if you are a Broadloom customer, reach out to your account manager. Uh, if you're not, um, hop on the website. We'd be happy to talk to you about how you can generate more reviews. Um, but that's it for today. Thank you everyone so much for joining us. We'll be back in two weeks with another webinar Wednesday. Um, feel free to email, uh, chat, any more questions. If we didn't get to them, we'll be sure to address them. Um, so again, just going to plug it one more time. FloorCon, Amelia Highland, November 28th through December 1st. Uh, we will see you there. Uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. So thanks, everybody. We'll see you in two weeks. Have a great week. Thank you.